One of the most important aspects of 3D printing is finding a perfect balance between print quality and speed. You want your prints to look nice and smooth, like this, but they're not supposed to take absolutely forever. How do you achieve this with ease? Many people will just tell you to change your layer height, and that's right. The only problem is, your print is either nice yet slow, or fast but looks horrible. In this video, I'll be showing you a setting in your slicer that allows you to get the best of both worlds. Let's get into it. Let's first print a control. This is basically just a sphere with the bottom cut off, and that's what I'm going to be using for all the prints in this video. We can use this sphere to test for ringing on the top, which is a really annoying thing that you'll sometimes find in 3D printing. I'll show you an example in a bit. If we slice this print, we can take, you can see that the model itself takes about 13 minutes to print. Let's print it and check the results. Alright, and here's the completed print. By the way, this was printed at 2 millimeter, at 0.2 millimeter layer height. Alright, so looking at these results, you can now see what ringing is. If you couldn't tell already, ringing is all the rings that form around the top of spheres, or any other curved sort of top layers in 3D printing. That's because all these little blocks can't exactly line up perfectly to make a nice seamless sphere. Therefore, they sort of shift over like this. And that's how 3D printing works. Unfortunately, it's annoying and it's not what we want. So let's go see some of the other results and the setting to see what we get. All right, let's now talk about the setting. Click on your print and select this button, variable layer height. And this will bring up our own section where we can sort between adaptive, smooth, and some other settings that allow our print to print with better quality and speed. Let's first pull this all the way down to quality and click adaptive. And you can see instantly this graph here becomes super colored. The green layers are really thin. Over here it's 0.08 millimeters, which is as small as my 3D printer can print. The red layers are really thick. 0.28, which is as large as my printer can print. This is so that in the middle layers, it saves speed because there isn't a lot of quality over here. While the top layers, it sacrifices some speed for quality to get less and less ringing. Let's slice this plate. This will take three more minutes than the original print at a total of 16 minutes, 44 seconds. And now let's look at the results. All right, let's now bring in our results from the second print. And look how nice this is already. Can you see even nearly as much ringing on the top? If we compare the sides, you can see how smooth the top itself looks. And right over here, we can see a few blocks. This is really a really big improvement in looks and quality. For a third experiment, let's optimize this for speed. Let's pull this all the way up to speed Click once more, Adaptive. And you can see almost all these layers are really, really big. Let's now slice our plate. And we can see that the print time has decreased all the way to 10 minutes. Now, it definitely won't look that good, as I'll show you in the results in a second. But it does save a lot of speed. So if you're ever printing a large or blocky model, this is definitely the way to go. And here are the results for speed. We're going to compare it to both quality and the original model. So here's the original, and you can see speed has slightly more ringing. It might be a little difficult to see on camera. Another aspect is you can see these little blocks on the side. And the layer lines are really prominent. But for two-thirds of the time, this is a really great print. We'll now try a few more of the settings. Click on the model. And I'm gonna bring this down to around 50%. I'll just keep it at 49, that's good enough, 51. All right, and now I wanna make this model smoother. Let's bring this all the way up. Maybe I wanna make it as smooth as possible. Click smooth, and we can see it changes the layer height. One of the cool things is that we can adjust this and click smooth over and over to get our model really, really slick. For my print, I just decided to click, keep it at 10 and click smooth once. Smooth, all right. Smooth this down. Let's now slice our plate. And we'll print it. Just before we print, we can see that the model takes 11 minutes to print. 
We're now going to talk about smooth. And you can see it right away. It looks almost identical to quality over here. Sorry, my camera focus is messing up. These two prints will be off to the side for now. One important thing that you can re realize is that while these two prints may look identical, this one actually took five less minutes to print, which is a lot of time in a percentage. So you should really experiment between these different things. If you're going to get around a similar quality, you might want to see time-wise which one is the best. And here's actually a pretty cool bonus. If you click on this, and go once more to variable layer height, we can click this feature called Keep Min. And what that does is when Smooth is activated, we actually prevent small areas or very fine details from being smoothed down. So this keeps the small areas nice and sharp while the rest of the model is smooth. Otherwise, the areas might get sort of dulled down and less prominent. I'm not going to show you a result because this sphere doesn't exactly have a bunch of small details, but you can really see how powerful this could be in more complicated models. Here are all the final print results. We have the original over here in the top left. We have quality over here, smooth, and speed. And we can really see how a, how a balance of all of these would be useful. And that's exactly what you can do. By putting the slider somewhere in the middle, we can reach a perfect balance so we can get the exact quality and speed we want.